All right, so in our last video, we started putting the pistons in. I've got all the pistons in and torqued the specs. I did intentionally leave one piston out, though. The reason I did that is because there's some things that you have to do before you install these, and then there's some other specs that you have to check. But I wanted to do it all in one video, so I wanted to have the pistons in before I talked about that. One of the things is ring end gap. Ring end gap is the amount of, come on in here and look at this cylinder here. Ring end gap is the amount of gap that you have in the cylinder when this is compressed. You have to check that. If you don't check it, um, you're going to have a problem. If the ring end gap is too tight when the motor heats up, the ends of this ring are going to expand because everything expands with heat and they're going to smash into each other. If these smash into each other, you're going to have a big problem once this motor warms up. Um, anything from the rings breaking to literally blowing a chunk of aluminum out of the side of your piston and blowing your motor. So ring end gap is, is very critical. Now on this particular motor, we've already checked all the ring end gaps and set them. We did that. We didn't do that on camera. When you take rings off of a piston, it's very important that you use a ring uh, a pair of ring pliers rather than rolling them off and on. Now, this can be a little tricky. I like to put my thumb up the, against the back of it and then I just take my ring pliers and I expand it just enough to get it off just like that. You never want to put this in there and roll these rings on because these rings are made of cast iron and you will damage them. So the way that we check ring end gap is we put the ring in the cylinder we just kind of go in there sideways with it. Now, we have to check the gap with this in the cylinder. However, in order for you to get an accurate reading, the ring has to be perfectly square. They do have tools called <laughs> ring squaring tools. Who'd have thought up that name? I like to just use the piston. If I've got the second compression ring on here, I just come up near the top of this thing here. And I know my ring is, you know, close to being square, but it's not square. So I'm just going to take the piston and I'm going to go down flush with that ring on the block and that's going to square it up. Now I know that my ring is perfectly square. Once we do that, we're going to take a set of feeler gauges and we're going to measure the gap. Now we've already measured the gap. We actually measured the gap on these and they were too tight. Um, so what we had to do is we had to do what we call file fitting the rings. If you put the if you put the rings in and the gap's too small, smaller than specs, you have to file fit it. Now, as a general rule, for every inch of bore, you need a certain amount of clearance. You need about four thousandths clearance for every inch of bore. So, for instance, if you have a four inch bore, you need sixteen thousandths clearance. However, with performance pistons, that can vary. Some piston manufacturers require much more clearance, which was the case with these forged pistons here. So you always need to check the piston manufacturer's specs. I know there's some Speed Pro pistons out there on a four inch bore. They require like 27 thousandths clearance. That's a lot more than four thousandths per inch of bore. So if you use the general rule of four inches per bore on a set of those high performance pistons that require a lot more clearance, you're gonna blow the motor. And I know nobody wants to do that. So we've actually gone in and we filed these. This is a ring filer here. I'm not going to do it now for the sake of time, but the way that we do it is we take all of our rings, our top compression ring and our second compression ring, and we put them in their respective bores. Then we check every gap. If the gap is too small, we come over to this ring file, we put them on here, and this has an abrasive wheel on it. And I'm obviously not going to file this one now because it's already been filed, but this, this just has a crank handle here, and we can go ahead and file the ends of the rings. If you do that, Make sure you take a little file and deburr the edges and make sure that you're all good. Now, at that point, you're ready to put your rings back on. Now, the rings have a specific location. They have, there's a second ring and there's a, a top ring. You don't ever want to mix these up because they're not the same. Very often, rings will either have a dot or the word top on them. And it should be pretty obvious which way that goes. That's going to go up. So again, once we put, get these ready to go, 
we're going to put these back on and we're just going to compress the ring just enough to get it over the piston. You don't want to go too much further because you'll break it. And you want to go on square into that bore, just like that. Make sure that it moves freely. Make sure you don't have any um, binding or anything. And at that point, then we're going to go ahead and stagger our rings and lube it up and we're ready to put it in the cylinder. Okay, another thing on the short block over here. Another thing that we have to check is we have to check what we call rod side clearance. Once all the pistons are installed in the motor, there is a very critical spec that has to be done. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we've got all of our connecting rods in this motor here. Whatever the specifications are from the manufacturer, you need to make sure that you have clearance between the rods. In an earlier video, we talked about crankshaft end plate. The crankshaft has to move. We put an indicator on it. Also, these rods have to have a certain amount of movement here. You can get in on this day and you can see that. There's a, if you can see that rod moving, there's a space between them. That space is required by the manufacturer. Now, the specifications on this motor say 10 to 20 thousandths. So I'm just going to take a 10 thousandths feeler blade and I'm going to stick it in there. And hey, look at that, I got plenty of clearance. And I know that I put a 19 in earlier and it got a little tight. So we're right in there between 10 to 20 thousandths. If you go a little bit over the specs, some aftermarket high performance rods will be a little thinner. They give you a little extra clearance. It's okay if you're a little bit over. Uh, the rods are a little bit loose as far as side clearance goes. Never okay to be tight, okay? Uh, a, a little extra clearance is infinitely better than not enough. That's a general rule that you need to live by. So very important that every rod has side clearance. Also on these rods, you need to make sure that they move independently of one another. This one here is moving and this one here is moving. Because this rod may be pushed up against the throw and I can move this one, but if this one's tight, that usually means that this rod is bent or something is binding in here. So not only do you have to have clearance, you have to make sure that both of these connecting rods move freely from side to side. You do that and it's in specs and everything will be fine. Now, we don't have the camshaft for the timing chain for this motor. Yeah, I don't know where they ordered it from. I think they might have ordered it you know, from Tibet or something because I've been waiting two weeks for it. So, but I do want to show you how to put a timing set on. 